A Fort Worth-based bump stock manufacturer handed over its entire inventory to the government to be destroyed. The majority of my customers are not going to turn them in, they're not going to destroy them uh, because they're not serialized at all. If it comes out and they say they're going to ban something, then people want that item and it just completely sells out. And uh, they're just not liking that at all and they're not willing to comply with that at all because they feel that, that that actually tramples on their rights when it comes to the Second Amendment. As of today, it's illegal to own a bump stock. What they do, it is un is, was undeniable the destructive power they they had so they had to act. The roots of the case lie in the tragic events of October the 1st, 2017, when an armed man unleashed a hail of bullets on a crowd of 22,000 music enthusiasts gathered at an open air concert in Las Vegas. Exploiting the rapid fire capabilities of bump stocks, he fired over a thousand rounds in just 11 minutes, resulting in 58 fatalities and leaving hundreds injured. This horrifying incident marked the deadliest mass slaying in modern U.S. history, leaving an indelible mark on the nation's consciousness. Hear the shots again. Because you heard that and then you, hear, you can hear it ricocheting off of everything. And everyone running away from the stage, or at least that I could think. That's, you know, it was like a da -da -da, like almost like firecrackers in like a metal barrel. Literally 10 feet in front of us, security guard. It had told us to put our hands up earlier because he was on my shoulders. I thought we were going to die. Everybody's face just immediately changed and the reaction on everybody's faces. In the aftermath, a profound debate emerged regarding the legality and regulation of bump stocks. These accessories, which utilize a semi-auto arms recoil to achieve rapid and continuous firing, drew widespread scrutiny. The crucial question was whether they should be classified as mash guns and therefore fall under the purview of existing federal regulations. This debate prompted action from the Trump administration. In a significant policy shift, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, or ATF, redefined bump stocks as mash guns in 2018, effectively banning their production, sale and possession. This move was a stark departure from the ADF's earlier stance during the Obama administration, which had maintained that bump stocks didn't meet the criteria for classification as mash guns. The controversy surrounding this regulatory shift sparked a legal battle, ultimately leading to the case now before the Supreme Court. Michael Cargill, a Texan arm shop owner and staunch advocate of arm rights, emerged as a prominent figure in this legal challenge. He mounted a lawsuit contesting the ADF's authority to enact the ban, asserting that it surpassed the regulatory jurisdiction. The legal journey of this case traversed various circuits, each offering distinct interpretations of the law. The 5th U.S. Circuit Court in New Orleans issued a split decision with a 13-3 ruling asserting that the ADF's interpretation was flawed. They contended that bump stocks didn't align with the statutory definition of a mash gun. This decision created a circuit split, further emphasizing the need for the Supreme Court's intervention. Conversely, the Sixth Circuit Court in Cincinnati approached the case differently, acknowledging the ambiguity in the statute's language. This circuit leaned towards the rule of lenity, suggesting a more lenient interpretation in favor of arm owners. The Supreme Court's decision to take up this case signifies a critical juncture in the ongoing debate over arms regulation and the scope of the ADF's authority. The ruling will not only impact the legality of bump stocks, but also set a precedent for how accessories and armed-related issues are regulated in the future. The case's background underscores the gravity of the matter and the profound implications it holds for both the arms industry and the broader legal landscape. Supreme Court to Rule on Bump Stock Ban In a significant development, the U.S. Supreme Court has decided to examine the legality of the government's ban on bump stocks. These devices have the capability to convert a semi-auto rifle into a rapid-firing arm with the potential to discharge hundreds of rounds per minute from a single trigger pull. This ruling is of paramount importance as it could set a precedent for defining bump stocks under the existing federal laws that regulate mash guns. The current legal debate revolves around whether bump stocks fall within the category of mash guns which have been prohibited under federal law since 1934. While the tragic Las Vegas slaying in 2017 where bump stocks were used urged the government to consider new regulations, Congress didn't enact any specific legislative changes. In response, the Trump administration, through the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, or ADF, introduced rules in 2018 that classified bump stocks as illegal mash guns. 
the EDF contended that bump stocks operate as a self-acting or self-regulating mechanism, allowing multiple rounds to be fired with a single trigger pull. However, this decision faced legal challenges across various circuits. The 10th Circuit Court of Appeals in Denver, the 6th Circuit Court in Cincinnati, and the Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia upheld the regulations. I'm going to fight for everyone in the state of Texas and this country. I'm going to comply. I'm going to turn it in, but I'm going to fight. If you step on the rights of the, the people that believe in the Second Amendment, then my job is to put my foot on your throat. One thing you have an issue is you don't have a, a Texas law, for instance, right now that, that you're able to charge on something like that. Talking about the enforcement aspect, it's, it's going to be virtually impossible. Conversely, the Fifth Circuit Court in New Orleans delivered a fractured 13 to 3 ruling deeming the regulation unlawful. Some judges argued that bump stocks don't operate solely with one trigger pull, while others questioned whether they can be accurately classified as mash guns. Solicitor General Elizabeth Preloger has sought the Supreme Court's intervention to promptly resolve this conflict. Until a contrary decision is reached, manufacturers within the Fifth Circuit, encompassing Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi, remain free to produce and sell bump stocks without mandating background checks registration or serialization. Michael Cargill, a Texas arms dealer who contested the regulation, emphasized the broader implications of the case. The definition of mash gun is a critical aspect of statutory interpretation impacting a wide swath of Americans. The current circuit split creates uncertainty for individuals nationwide, potentially exposing them to severe penalties for possessing bump stocks. According to ADF estimates, over half a million bump stocks were purchased in the years preceding the 2018 regulation. This underscores the widespread implications of the forthcoming Supreme Court decision, which could either affirm or alter the existing legal framework surrounding these devices. Importantly, this case doesn't center on the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms. Instead, it delves into the nuanced legal interpretation of whether bump stocks can be classified as mesh guns within the existing regulatory framework. This decision will significantly influence how the law addresses its continuous issue, potentially leading to broader implications for gun control and regulation in the United States. The court is anticipated to schedule arguments for Garland v. Cargill early next year with a ruling expected by late June. Critical Examination the U.S. Supreme Court's recent decision to review the ban on bump stocks, arm attachments that enable rapid firing of semi-auto arms, marks a pivotal moment in American firearm regulation. The central question before the Supreme Court is not one of Second Amendment rights, but rather the adherence to federal law in altering the regulations surrounding bump stocks. The Obama administration's 2018 determination stating that bump stocks didn't qualify as mesh guns and therefore shouldn't be federally banned was reversed by the Trump administration after the Las Vegas tragedy. This marked a significant shift in stance for the ADF. A bump stock functions by harnessing the recoil energy of a semi-auto firearm, allowing the trigger to reset and continue firing without the shooter manually releasing it. It necessitates consistent forward pressure on the arm and constant trigger pressure. This mechanical distinction forms the crux of the legal debate. Federal appeals courts have grappled with interpreting the relevant statutes. The Fifth Circuit ruled 13-3 in January that bump stocks fall outside the National Firearms Act and Gun Controls Act definition of a mash gun. Conversely, a panel of judges in the D.C. court arrived at the opposite conclusion, arguing that bump stocks essentially constitute self-regulating mechanisms qualifying as mesh guns under existing federal law. The Supreme Court's decision to review the case stems from the 5th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals' ruling in New Orleans, which invalidated the bump stock ban. This has spurred the Biden administration to seek a definitive resolution from the nation's highest court. The potential ramifications of this case extend beyond the bump stock ban itself. The court's verdict will serve as a benchmark for evaluating the ADF's regulatory authority and its interpretations of ambiguous terms within existing firearm statutes. Moreover, it may set a precedent for future legal challenges regarding arm control measures influencing how the federal government regulates firearms. In light of these considerations, the case of Garland v. Cargill holds substantial implications for the American legal landscape. A decision is anticipated by early summer 
and the outcome will undoubtedly shape the nation's approach to firearm regulation, striking a balance between public safety and Second Amendment rights. This landmark case underscores the critical role of the judiciary in interpreting and upholding the rule of law in a deeply contentious and evolving aspect of American society. Implications and Context the recent decision by the U.S. Supreme Court to examine the legality of the federal ban on bun stocks signifies a critical juncture in American gun regulation. Bun stocks, accessories that enable a semi-auto arm to fire at a rate resembling that of a mash gun, were thrust into the national spotlight following the tragic October 2017 mass sling in Las Vegas. In the aftermath of the Las Vegas massacre, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives ADF, implemented a prohibition on the production, sale and possession of bump stocks in December of 2018. This move classified bump stocks as mash guns which had been federally banned since 1986. The ADF's decision prompted a Texas gun shop owner to challenge its authority, leading to a series of conflicting rulings in lower courts. The Supreme Court's agreement to review this case follows an appeal by the Justice Department seeking to overturn a lower court ruling that invalidated the ban. The case's significance is underscored by the fact that it will be heard by a Supreme Court where conservatives hold a 6-3 majority. Advocates for gun safety, represented by Nick Suplina of Every Town for Armed Safety, emphasize the potential for devastating consequences associated with arms equipped with bump stocks which mimic the firing capabilities of mash guns. The Justice Department contends that bump stocks enable a shooter to initiate continuous firing with a single pull of the trigger on a semi-auto arm, effectively transforming the arm into a mash gun. This distinction forms the core of the legal debate surrounding the ban. The Supreme Court's decision to take on this case comes on the heels of yet another tragic mass slaying in Lewiston, Maine, where 18 lives were lost. This recent incident serves as a stark reminder of the pressing need for comprehensive arm regulation. The impending hearing on the bump stocks case is slated for early next year. It coincides with a separate challenge to a federal law that prohibits individuals subject to domestic violence restraining orders from owning firearms set to be heard in the coming week. These legal deliberations unfold against the backdrop of a divided American public where a significant portion of households possess firearms, yet a majority supports stricter arm control measures, including mandatory background checks for prospective arm purchasers. The Supreme Court's decision to assess the bump stock ban's legality reflects the ongoing struggle to strike a balance between Second Amendment rights and the imperative for public safety. The outcome of this case will undoubtedly reverberate across the nation. Bump Stock Ban The U.S. Supreme Court's decision to review the legality of the federal ban on bump stock devices represents a pivotal moment in the ongoing debate surrounding armed rights and regulations in the United States. At the heart of this case is the question of whether the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, or ADF, a division of the U.S. Justice Department, correctly interpreted existing law in classifying bump stocks as mash guns. The ban came into effect in 2019, marking a significant shift from the ADF's previous stance, which didn't categorize bump stocks as mash guns. Federal law has long prohibited the sale or possession of mass guns carrying penalties of up to 10 years in prison. These arms are defined by a 1934 law, the National Firearms Act, as arms capable of automatically firing multiple rounds with a single trigger pull. In contrast, bump stocks harness a semi-automatic arms recoil to facilitate rapid firing by bumping the shooter's trigger finger. The Supreme Court's previous reluctance to address challenges to the bump stock's prohibition sets the stage for a potentially groundbreaking ruling. Over the years, the court's conservative majority has expanded arms rights through significant rulings culminating in the landmark decision in 2022 which affirmed an individual's constitutional right to carry a handgun in public for self-defense. Next week, the court will also consider a case regarding whether to uphold a federal law barring individuals with domestic violence restraining orders from possessing arms, further emphasizing the court's continued engagement with critical arm rights issues. The impetus for the ban on bump stocks stemmed from the 2017 Las Vegas shooting where the assailant's use of bump stock-equipped arms resulted in a horrifying toll of 58 fatalities 
and hundreds of injuries. In response, the Trump administration took measures to prohibit these devices, leading to legal challenges such as the one brought forth by Michael Cargill, a Texas arms shop owner and advocate for arms rights. Richard Sam, representing Cargill, contends that the ADF's sudden reversal on bump stocks contradicts its prior recognition that these devices, along with semi-auto arms, do not meet the classification of mash guns. This abrupt shift in policy, according to Samp, reflects a prioritization of political expediency over adherence to legal precedent. The Fifth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, based in New Orleans, sided with Cargill in a divided opinion in January, asserting that the law didn't unequivocally support the ADF's interpretation of the statute. The Justice Department, however, contends that this decision poses a significant threat to public safety given that bump stocks enable a shooter to fire hundreds of rounds per minute with a single trigger pull. While this case doesn't directly address whether the ban infringes on the Second Amendment right to bear arms, it delves into the crucial issue of regulatory interpretation and enforcement in the context of firearms accessories. In parallel, the Supreme Court is set to address another case involving the National Rifle Association's or NRA's exercise of free speech rights. The case centers on allegations that a New York state official pressured financial institutions to cease business dealings with the NRA, potentially limiting the organization's ability to engage in protected First Amendment activities. The court's deliberations on both cases will undoubtedly have far-reaching implications for arms rights and regulations in the United States, prompting a renewed examination of the delicate balance between public safety and constitutional freedoms. Supreme Court Reviews ADF The Supreme Court's recent announcement regarding the ADF's bump stock ban marks a significant development in firearms regulation. The case in question, Cargill v. Garland, is set to be reviewed by the Supreme Court in their upcoming term. This decision will potentially put an end to the ADF's current authority on bump stocks, a contentious topic that's been under discussion for over a year now. This case originated in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals and is vital in addressing the ADF's perceived overreach. The initial victory came when the panel ruled in favor of Cargill, declaring the ADF's final rule on bump stocks invalid. This ruling struck a major blow to the ADF's assertion of authority to enforce such restrictions. The heart of the matter lies in the interpretation of the term MASH gun as outlined in the National Firearms Act or NFA and the Gun Control Act or GCA. The ADF's attempt to categorize bump stocks as MASH guns after the tragic incident in Las Vegas led to significant legal debate. Prior to this, the ADF had maintained that devices like bump stocks didn't fall under the definition of mash guns. The case brings to light crucial legal doctrines. Chevron deference, a principle derived from a landmark case, pertains to the deference given to administrative actions by agencies like the ADF. This principle comes into play when an agency's interpretation of an ambiguous statute is considered rational or reasonable. In contrast, the rule of lenity demands that unclear or ambiguous laws be interpreted in a manner most favorable to the people rather than the enforcing agency. The Fifth Circuit's panel decision provides a clear interpretation of the statutory language and the mechanics of semi-auto arms. It concludes that bump stocks do not fit the technical definition of mash guns outlined in the GCA and NFA. This development not only affects bump stocks, but also carries implications for other ADF rules, including those concerning frames, receivers, pistol braces, and force reset triggers. The Supreme Court's decision in Cargill v. Garland will undoubtedly set the stage for further legal proceedings and potentially reshape the landscape of firearms regulation in the years ahead. In summary, the Supreme Court's decision to review the ADF's bump stock ban in the Cargill v. Garland case is a pivotal moment in arms regulation. This case has far-reaching implications for various ADF rules and has sparked crucial debates surrounding legal doctrines like Chevron deference and the rule of lenity. The upcoming decision is poised to shape the future of firearms regulation in the United States, legal interpretations, and potential industry repercussions. In a recent development, the Supreme Court has decided to review the legality of the federal ban on bump stocks. This accessory enables semi-auto arms to mimic the rapid fire of mash guns. The case revolves around whether the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, 
firearms and explosives, or ADF, correctly interpreted the law banning mash guns as including bump stocks. The court's decision will have far-reaching consequences, potentially affecting both the arms industry and consumers alike. Two distinct legal interpretations have emerged from different circuits, adding complexity to the matter. The Fifth Circuit Court in New Orleans, in a fractured 13-3 ruling, found the ban invalid. They argued that bump stocks didn't meet the definition of a mash gun, a term defined in the National Firearms Act. They asserted that even if the term were considered ambiguous, the rule of lenity would dictate an interpretation in favor of the people, concluding that bump stocks are not mash guns. Furthermore, they emphasized that any change in definition would require congressional action rather than ADF authority. In contrast, the Sixth Circuit Court took a different approach, stating that the term in the statute is indeed ambiguous. They explored whether to apply Chevron or the rule of lenity to clarify this ambiguity. Ultimately, they opted for the rule of lenity, contradicting the ADF's stance. Contradicting the ADF's stance. Amid these conflicting interpretations, the Supreme Court's intervention is pivotal. If the court affirms the ban, manufacturers of bump stocks would face a significant blow, unable to produce or sell them legally. This could prompt a shift towards the development of alternative accessories that comply with regulations. Moreover, it could set a legal precedent for ADF's authority in regulating arms accessories. The decision's impact on consumer behavior is noteworthy. Current owners of bump stocks may be required to surrender or dispose of them, potentially leading to increased demand for alternative arm accessories. The ruling could also prompt a surge in advocacy efforts within the arms industry, influencing future legislation and regulatory decisions. Furthermore, the decision's implications for legal precedent and market demand cannot be overstated. It may guide future interpretations of arm accessory regulation and potentially reshape the industry's landscape. As the Supreme Court reviews this case, it remains a focal point in the broader debate surrounding foreign arm regulations and the extent of ADF's authority. Ultimately, the court's ruling will shape the path forward for both the arms industry and enthusiasts alike. Impact on Arms Industry the Supreme Court's announcement to review the ban on bump stocks carries significant implications for the arms industry. This decision could have a ripple effect on various aspects of the industry, from manufacturing to sales and legal precedent. If the Supreme Court upholds the ban on bump stocks, manufacturers of these devices would face a direct impact. They would no longer be able to legally produce or sell bump stocks. This could result in a shift in production focus towards other firearm accessories or modifications. The court's decision on bump stocks may set a legal precedent for how the government regulates arm accessories. This could have broader implications for other controversial accessories or modifications in the future. It may establish guidelines on how the ADF interprets and enforces regulations related to firearm devices. If bump stocks are deemed illegal, Consumers who currently own these devices may need to surrender or dispose of them. This could lead to a surge in demand for other arm accessories or modifications that provide similar effects. It may also influence consumer attitude towards future arm regulations. The court's decision could provide much-needed clarity on the ADF's authority to regulate arm accessories. This could benefit both manufacturers and consumers by offering clear guidelines on what is legally permissible in terms of accessories and modifications. The arms market may experience shifts in demand and supply as a result of the court's decision. Manufacturers and retailers may need to adjust their product offerings based on the legal status of bump stocks. This could lead to changes in pricing, availability, and consumer preferences. Depending on the court's decision, there may be legal challenges or compliance issues for both manufacturers and consumers. Manufacturers would need to ensure that their products comply with the new ruling, while consumers may need to navigate the legal process of surrendering or disposing of banned items. The decision may also galvanize advocacy efforts within the arms industry. Depending on the outcome, various stakeholders may seek to influence future legislation and regulatory decisions to either support or challenge the court's ruling. In conclusion, the Supreme Court's decision on the bump stock ban will have far-reaching consequences for the arms industry. From manufacturing and production to legal precedent and consumer behavior, the ruling will shape the industry's landscape for years to come.
It's a pivotal moment that could set the tone for how firearm accessories are regulated and managed in the United States. Well guys, that does it for this video. See you next time and bye for now.